let's add score to our endless runner. Welcome back and thanks for joining me on the canvas. The first thing we're going to do is add a new object, make that a text object. We're going to set the scale to this to something like 50 and we'll name this score. I'm going to go ahead and add some flair to it by centering it, adding some bold, and we're going to go to the asset store to add a new text font. Now you can use whatever you like here. I'm just going to scroll down and pick something at random, something that looks good. Let's try Goldman Bold. I like the way that that looks. All right, now I'm just going to add an outline and enable the shadow and hit apply. And we're going to add this to our game scene. Now I'm just going to kind of move it around and center it to a position I like, making sure that I have enough space on the left and right side. So we're just going to scale it out. Now that it's all, well, you know, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Now we're going to go to our panel settings here and our properties, and we're going to move it to our UI layer, which already exists. We'd already done that previously. Now what we're going to need to do is go to our game canvas and we're going to create a external event. Don't worry. It's not as scary as it looks. Follow along here and it'll be okay. So we're going to name this score or score system if you'd like. And what this allows us to do is move our code into an isolated position. So we're going to add a new event and I'm going to end up creating a event group here. So let me just collapse this down so I can see a little bit better. I'm going to right click on a new event, go add and event group. We're going to call this the um, load score system system. Oh, oh, there we go. And now we're going to right click, go add, and we're going to select link external event. Now what this allows us to do is pull the code from elsewhere. So we're going to click on this, add our score system, and we're going to click this little button here. That's going to pull us into that script. It's going to ask us what scene we want it to be tied into. And we're going to click our game canvas, which just happens to be our only one. And now we have an empty event sheet. So we're going to add a new event. We're going to add a comment here that just lets you know what we're doing. We're going to say create a timer at the start of the game. There we go. And we're going to add a condition. This will be the beginning of the game scene. Now, because we're using an external event, whenever you call at beginning of the game scene, it's going to pull that script in and read it immediately. So then we're going to go to our actions and add a scene timer. We're going to start or reset a scene timer, and we're going to name this one game score. All right. Hit OK. And we need one more event to make this work. I'm going to add another comment. And in this one, we're going to set text to timer. Now, we don't need any conditions here. It's actually always going to run and it's an action. We're going to use the score text action and we're gonna hit okay. So that way I can add the expression here. The expression that we're looking for is timer elapsed time and when we add that, we can see it automatically converts it into a string because it is a number and timer elapsed time is what we're looking for. We're going to pass through the game score timer. Now, that's all we need to technically see the timer. But if we preview, it looks like gibberish. How do we fix that? Well, um, we need to use a round function. Oops, I double clicked on it. So what we're going to do is go into here and we're going to type round lowercase and it's going to allow us to wrap the game score in a rounder. And what that does is it rounds it to the nearest second or the, the first digit slot. Now that'd be great if we want a nice slow timer, but I want to advance this system a little bit further. How do we do that? Great question. Well, so we're going to go back to our score. And we're going to change our round to round two. And because it's the second part of the function, we need to capitalize the T on two. And then inside of our, our score, this allows us to pass through another value to where we round to. So if I put one in, we're going to see that this goes to the, hun the first hundredth location on the score. Well, that looks okay, but we, we don't want a decimal point. Um, so what we're going to do is go outside of that scope and we're going to multiply 
by 10. And what this allows us to do is move that number over into the 10th digit. So now it's kind of like 2.3, but we're loading it by a multiplication of 10, which gives us a full number of 80, 90, 100, and so forth. This looks much more like a distance timer, and hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, come support me on Ko-Fi. I'd really appreciate it. Send me a cheers and uh, a cup of coffee. Thank you so much. Until next time, remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.